I believe that listening is very important. I every so often just check up on people, make sure they know you care because even if you have no resentment towards someone, you have no issue with them, you do care about them. You're just not good at showing it. It's pretty damaging in the long run because if there's no small little efforts to make a big effort, which is the relationship ultimately, mm. then you can't really, you know, go anywhere. Like it won't be stable because if you can't put effort into the smallest things like listening, it kind of shows someone something about you, even mm. if it's not your intent. Yeah. Hi everyone, it's Raghu back with Mind Rolling and I'm doing an intro, which I don't do a lot of, uh, but I thought that this uh, required a little bit of a, a description of what this podcast is. Particularly, it is with Zoe Marcus, who happens to be my granddaughter, who has been on Mind Rolling over the last... Oh, several years actually, and she's now 12 years old. And I am always really interested to see how next generation is reacting to all of the untoward kinds of events that we are living through, from the pandemic to the war in Ukraine, to the environmental degradation, and particularly to the divide. Uh, we really talked about the divide between in this country uh, that is going on that is very, very severe between uh, people who have ideas about how uh, our society should be run uh, and uh, both sides are fairly intractable and there is a another level to it that we did discuss and it's amazing to get uh, her... Uh, feedback for such a thing because uh, basically there's real hope. There's real hope when you hear what it is that how she responds to this and she's very well spoken, particularly for a 12 year old going on 13. And I, yeah, there's real hope with the kind of, uh, um, the the well thought out and involvement that such a young person has involvement meaning she is aware of all of what is going on the intractability of the divide uh, the the results of the pandemic being related to the environmental degradation and the haves and the have nots and and of course, the uh, us being involved in a, uh, us meaning people of this world having an event like this Ukraine war uh, with Russia going on. So, uh, in fact, uh, there was one thing I do want to mention because I did I read a little passage from this book that I got, the Psychology of Stupidity, and those of you who listen to Mind Rolling know I refer to. Uh, I refer to it, I don't use the word stupidity, I use the word wrong thinking a lot. And that includes all of us, including myself. And so this uh, this particular book, I read a little passage from it, which seems dead on in terms of what's going on in our world, yet it has a negative kind of feel to it, just the way it's sort of an attack on, on people who may not have enough education about different subjects and so on, which, you know, is true. And I, I, I just wanted to get her reaction, Zoe's reaction to it. And uh, I want to say at the same time, Ramdas, talk about him. He would, uh, he would not be down with any kind of negative um, 
projection or or cynicism. And I find, like we used to have this funny dialogue. I tried to get him to watch Larry David, you know, so he'd watch a little and go, I can't watch this. This guy is just absolutely a negative, cynical guy, which, of course, you know, is the fun of the show. And I found how I related with it and, and kind of loved it. And, yeah, that's... Uh, another example of this from Ram Dass was he used to say, I'm, you know, when he'd have dark thoughts, I'm going to love my thoughts to death. And then after a while, a year or so, he said, I'm not using that anymore. I'm not, that's a negative way for me to uh, look to transform the stuff that need, still needs to be transformed. I'm just going to say, love my thoughts. In other words, he was getting to a place where, well, he had way been in the place, but the idea is being, making a little bit of friends with some of the dark stuff that goes on in our, in our heads and, and expressed through our, our uh, personalities. So I just wanted to mention that in relation to give a little bit of background around uh, me quoting from this particular book, which is some kind of professor at a university. So, but it still has that uh, little bit of a negative, sin sinister, and s a little bit of cynicism. <laughs> That's really, uh, you know, uh, a, th a thing that we have to be aware of. And I am very aware of it in, my, in myself. It's something I, I do work with. Uh, I just want to also uh, bring up uh, that... Uh, Here's an antidote for uh, that kind of uh, dark outlook. Uh, and it's this book that uh, it's called Whisper in the Heart. And uh, it was done by uh, Parvati Marcus. This is all a family podcast today, right? <laughs> and uh, But it's a tremendous book that really uh, tells people's stories uh, of how they encountered Neem Karoli Baba. It's a whisper in the heart, uh, the ongoing presence of Neem Karoli Baba. And these uh, stories are just extraordinary and amazing and uh, are, are certainly part of this legacy that, that we have uh, uh, been living with for the last, gee, 50 years, just about, if not more. Uh, so that's available now also as an ebook uh, by October 1st. If you this podcast, it'll be a week away from that or something, uh, and is well worth an investment. You can also go to ramdas.org slash shop or Amazon or Barnes and Noble, and you can get this book. It's got a apps. Oh, here, do I have it? I have it somewhere. I want to show the cover of the book. It went away. Anyhow. <laughs> You can see I'm really prepared, right? Uh, bottom line is uh, check it out. And this is Mind Rolling on Be Here Now Network. And please enjoy. Hi, everybody. It's Raghu, back with Mind Rolling and back with uh, Zoe Marcus. Welcome, Zoe. Zoe has been here a couple of times in the past years, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, happy to have you here because I really, uh, truly, even though you're family, I truly honor the perspective that you have uh, shared over the years about what is going on in our world. And uh, yes, it's... Uh, you, you have a, a, a firm grip on the reality of things, I believe. Now I'm biased, but, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, Zoe, first of all, how are you, are you doing okay right now? Mm -hmm. I'm doing good. Yeah? Yeah. I just came back from school a couple hours ago. Mm. Zoe's going to be 13 at, uh, in a few months, and so it's it's marking a whole... Uh, era going into a different era of teenagehood, and uh, we're all in quite unusual circumstances, all of us, and it's it spills into everyone's lives. Your life, my, you know, I'm of course lived many decades. 
you're just starting out. But here we are. And I have had, and one of the main reasons why I, I love to talk to you is to just share, of course, the perspective that I mentioned before. But also for me, I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm hoping you next gen are going to have some real uh, answers to some of these issues, which are really uh, quite severe. So, uh, so since we talked, it's been a while since we talked. I think it might even be a couple of years, right? Is it possible? Maybe. Um, maybe like a year and a half. I think the last mm -hmm. time was November 2020, maybe. Jesus, you got that kind of memory. Holy God. Um, so we had talked about the pandemic. It's still, uh, it's abating now. It's slowing down apparently. Uh, of course, I'm just getting over it myself. You've had it. And, uh, oh, uh, I must, we must mention this new um, incredible saying that a sister of Zoe came up with. Na her name is Willow. Because what happened was, so Zoe got it, her big sister, Dylan, got it, got COVID. But Willow never got it for months and months and months. And I, I said to her one day, how are you managing not to get COVID? And she said, I don't know, I'm just living my life. She said it like that. <laughs> so now we have a bumper sticker. I'm just living my life. Meanwhile, she got it and I got it <laughs> <Yeah>. after her. <laughs> oh boy. So, so we did talk a little bit about that, I know. But one thing that hadn't happened that's, that's a, a gigantic... Uh, event and it uh, it'll be a gigantic historical event obviously which is the war in the ukraine how do you how do you relate with the fact that there's actually like from when i was born you know after the war the second world war there was an the same sort of warfare between humans is happening at this stage of the game of, of hopefully thinking that we're more enlightened than that? And what's your impression of, of that whole thing? I think that, well, it seems like every generation has their own war, like that's happened in their time. Like um, mm. Generation X had the Vietnam War. It's like, like there's always some group of people that, aren't satisfied that aren't happy and there's always sort of this outlook for more and like to be more than others like war wouldn't happen if humans didn't have this superiority complex above one another thinking that mm -hmm. they have to be, be better they are better so i think it all just comes down to being like content in what you have and not being part of like a corrupt government that thinks that they need to overtake everything and need to um, just be the best or conquer everything. Mm. Well, it's difficult if you were living in Russia, of course, this is what we're talking about. Uh, you were a citizen living in Russia, which has a draconian, I mean, very... Uh, dark underbelly in terms of controlling the citizens. So many really untoward things and, and deaths have happened as a result of it. And you have basically a dictator who's firmly in power. It's hard if you're a citizen, you, you'd you be in fear many of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of your life. And many people have uh, protested. And uh, one a famous one... Was his name Navalny? I'm not quite sure. He's in in a gulag in in Russia, and uh, you know they just put you away. So it's very difficult. I think going back to the primary reason of uh, that you're speaking, you're speaking actually to the divide. We have a divide over here, where it's just tremendous self interest, right? Each yeah. party thinks that they, uh, through their self interest and through righteousness. Uh, a grievement, you know, where you feel like somebody's done stuff to you, then 
there is the perfect uh, way to uh, increase the divide, and that's what's happening. And of course, in in Europe, in this war, it's emblemized by people who are holding on to power uh, out of uh, uh, certainly greed and uh, and as you put it, feeling like they are superior. So what now, here's the big question. What are the things, from your point of view, what, what are the sort of things that can close that divide? I think it all comes down to, well, like Russia, for example, it's like very focused there's a leader that is clearly in all control and has almost no power to the citizens. Um, and it's like in like, it's, it's almost like hopeless, not hopeless, but it's almost like it's this endless cycle of if you're a citizen, you want something, Oh, you can't because you have this all in powerful being above you so you can't really do anything to make a change almost but i mm. think it's all up to the like the the um their leader to say you know obviously i have no expectation of him to have any self-awareness mm. and to take a step down but that it seems like the like to be just self-aware and think Am I really doing this for everyone? Am I leading the biggest, the biggest country in the world by landmass? Am I really leading them well? Am I, am I doing this for them? Am I doing this for myself? Because nothing, no one will ever be content if they don't know how what they're doing is affecting others. Because if you're it's I, I agree so much with like ignorance is bliss because if you don't know what you're doing is wrong or you do know what you're doing is wrong and you just choose not to do anything about it because it's everything's beneficial to you mm. like nothing will ever change nothing will ever change if no one's self-aware and what they're doing and realize that what they're doing is not good for the well-being of others so we just kind of all Everyone needs to take a moment and think to themselves, are the choices I'm making good for others or are they just benefiting mm. me? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, uh, it of course, reminds me uh, of Ramdas when you talk about some of these leaders in this particular case, of course, the, the we're talking about Putin. Uh, if they had any way in which to become more self-aware in terms, certainly the bottom line, the, the harm that's being caused. And, uh, of course, and you said, but I don't really expect him to change, yeah. right? But you know what would remind me is Ramdas. He would put a picture of like a, a, a Trump, you know, this is a Trump kind of being that does not have any self-awareness. And he would put it on his altar, and I'd say, "Well, okay, what are you what are you doing?" Well, I'm recognizing the soul behind the guy that's doing all these bad actions, and that's just, you know, gee, tough incarnation this life that you are have have to go through and create this really difficult karma, to say the least. And uh, so he would, and then he would say, "I think he had." A feeling like in the case, because we were talking about Trump, that Trump, there was potential redemption that he, possibly in, in the uh, presence of somebody who was not living in fear of this kind of polarity uh, and, and had that kind of uh, just completely relaxed in the moment being that it would rub off. He had that, he was like, very positive about the fact that there isn't every human is redeemable somehow. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that? Um, I think to an extent that everyone has a chance to be better, 
Um, definitely for other some, it's like a lot more to do to make that happen, <laughs> you know. Um, but sometimes it's as simple as I like what I see a lot by like my peers and who surrounds me is just like being naive and mm. being ignorant, I guess, towards certain things. It's like, oh. I know you could be such a, a better person. I know this, but a lot of it is taught such as like when you see a 12 year old being racist, obviously they didn't come up with that themselves. They've yeah. been taught that. So there's clearly someone under there who can be, they can unlearn this and they can, grow from that and you know make their own mind up about certain things because no one comes into the world with hatred it's it's all almost always taught even if you form your own hatred towards someone or judgment you always you see you could see your parents maybe like talking bad or um form a hatred towards someone and you see that and you think oh well this is what people do or you say you see them like just being like making racist comments and thinking oh well this is just how people act this must be the truth so why don't i go spread this to everyone else so i i think it's mm -hmm. people like that are the kids of those people are in my opinion redeemable I I think that it takes a lot of self-realization and independence, you know, f away from your parents. Mm, independent thinking. Yeah, to to you know sort of recollect your thoughts and like um make your own opinions, but I think with people who are over the age of like 25, you know, like your brain's fully developed, you've kind of been on your own forced to make your own thoughts it's sort of a lot harder because if you've thought one way for the whole time i can't just make this whole it could be the best paragraph in the world it could be the best it could be a 10 minute speech it could be amazing perfect points everything that won't change their mind if they've thought that way for their whole life i can't say anything to change their mind mm. and I, I also think that on the other side there's an issue where some people think that they are this powerful being that can change people, people's like, like idea, like thoughts towards things, and it's ideologies. Yeah, yeah like it. ideologies towards things because it sort of like it. It's and it's. I know they have good intentions. They everyone who's making the 10 minute long speeches towards these people they always have good intentions and i'm not taking that away from them but there has to be some sort of um uh like awareness towards the fact that if someone's thought some way for 10 years you can't say anything to change that you have to sort of unlearn it over time very slowly and then relearn a different way very slowly so I think um, we sort of have to let other human beings be independent and do things on their own times and be aware that if someone says something wrong, we can't jump start the conclusion that they are inherently a bad person. Yeah. We sort of have to think like of where they've come from. Why would they think this? How long have they thought this? Because some people just aren't as privileged to think differently in all honesty mm, mm, mm. good point very good joey do you think that uh i mean one thing that we talk about i talk about on podcasts a lot with the different teachers that come and uh one very i think important thing that comes along in relation to how do we deal with this divide of people is listening, being able to be a good listener. You know, we are so distracted. I mean, do you, do you ever see, you know, people with, uh, uh, you're talking to somebody and you, maybe there's some food and you're doing, yeah, sure, yeah. And you're looking at your phone. We all do this, right? Well, you don't do it because you don't have a phone yet. See, <laughs> but you're going to have one and you're going to have to deal with it. Uh, but 
being able to stop and pay attention to somebody. Uh, there's this great writer, and I quote this a lot, named Simone Weil, a French writer, uh, philosopher. And she said, the greatest gift that you can give to anybody of generosity is simply paying attention and listening to them, you know? And are you familiar with this syndrome? I, I've done it. I've, I've been distracted, you know, or ADD, the whole nine yards. But uh, listening, what do you think? I definitely agree. If someone, if I'm trying to say something, if someone can as simply just show that they care and that they're listening, that will go a very long way. Mm. Because I think little actions, just like how little words make up big words, I think little actions make up bigger actions in the long run. Mm. I think if someone can show over time to me that they actually care to listen that really shows that they care about a relationship that or like care that what they're putting into this so i believe that um listening is very important i think that checking up on people just once in a while is very important you don't have to every day be like oh how was like it doesn't have to be like that you can just maybe Every so often, just check up on people. Make sure they know you care. Because even if you have no resentment towards someone, you have no issue with them, you do care about them. You're just not good at showing it. It's pretty damaging in the long run because if there's no small little efforts to make a big effort, which is the relationship ultimately, Mm. then you can't really you know go anywhere like it won't be stable because if you can't put effort into the smallest things like listening it kind of shows someone something about you even if it's not your intent yeah yeah absolutely yeah i like yeah the the little things that count yeah you don't have to think you can do a huge huge act but that that reminds me, of course, of what we're in in terms of the environment and the degradation that's going on, um, which has got to be the scariest part of the whole deal for for you, your generation, is to think about this and what uh, what are we looking at, you know, in in the future. And I th- I think the doing little things really applies. It applies everywhere, but environmentally, being able to make a contribution, which is, there's so many different things, tiny things that you can do, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's simple as putting your trash in the recycling, you know, like, I think we can always, like, the environment is almost the only thing like if all goes wrong we have this earth so you know Mm. we better protect it like one time in science last semester we did we took everyone took this quiz where they filled out questions and they were pretty simple questions like do you bring your own bags to grocery stores or do you actually you know do recycling and really most kids and it would grade you by saying how many Earths, if everyone lived like you, how many Earths would it take to, to sustain that forever? And mm, wow! And most people got over three, which was pretty insane if you think about it. I think I got 1.8. By virtue of the just responding to these questions and they yeah. had a formula that dictated how many Earths you would need to sustain. Wow. And it wasn't even accounting for like wildfires or bad weather, or global warming. It was simply these tiny little things that make no difference in your day to put some effort into how much they can change. You need one or the two, you know? Wow. That's insane. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow. Hey, you know, I want to, I want to read something. This is, uh, this is a mixed bag what I'm going to read because somebody sent me this book. It's called The Psychology of Stupidity. 
It's mm-hmm. uh, so it's, it's like rough in a way, you know. It's not kind. Like I, I when I was reading through it, I was thinking about Ramdas and how he, he hated to. He even said, you know, when he has dark thoughts, he used to say, "I love them to death." These, you know, whatever crazy thoughts that we all have. And then later he said, I can't say that. It's too violent. It's not kind to myself. Mm-hmm. So he'd say, I love my thoughts. I love my thoughts. So you can get, instead of running away from them, just embrace them is, was the idea of that that is. Uh, so this is, uh, so there's a giant asterisk, and I could only do this with, with Zoe because she won't laugh at me, I hope. Okay. So please, everybody, take note that, uh, as I say, I, I, I am not in agreement with the tone here, but there are things in it that make a lot of sense. Here we go. And this is from, uh, and this man is a neuropsychologist in research at the University of Fribourg, which, Fribourg, maybe Belgium, not sure. Are we drowning in stupidity now more than ever? When you look at certain contemporary developments, you can legitimately ask the question. These days, seemingly educated people who are entirely capable of informing themselves if they wanted to, reject scientific recommendations on vaccination and climate, spout far-fetched conspiracy theories, vote happily for morons, and support stupid initiatives, become outraged over meaningless nonsense, incessantly embrace frivolous whims, and some even decide that, as far as they're concerned, the earth is flat, no no matter what people say. Against a background of diplomatic tension, terrorism, and unending wars, the methodical destruction of the environment and an economy that only benefits a handful of individuals who give no signs of being particularly clever. (laughs) Uh, Our era seems entirely dedicated to the triumph of stupidity. There's a lot of truth in there, even though it's a little bit nasty, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. For sure. I think... Definitely, I. there's always intent to everything you do, even tiny little things. And sometimes I feel like I can never know why people do and say the things like, with all the science in the world we have, they still say stuff like the earth is flat. And I don't know why they're saying it. They live much happier of a life if they move on and just agree with most people. I really think they're putting too much energy into something scientists have had solved for a good while now. Mm -hmm. And that goes for bigger things, too. It's like vaccination. Like, if you're still not vaccinated after, I don't know how long it's been, maybe almost like like a year and a half since the vaccine came out, Mm -hmm. we... Clearly, they've made three, two, three other more vaccines. There's clearly, uh, it's helpful and it, it's obviously not harming. And there's obvious evidence. They wouldn't keep making vaccines if the first one didn't work, you know? So it's like, I think some people do things for no reason. Their intent. I don't know, but it just doesn't add up to me. And I, yeah, I don't know why people waste their energy on stuff that's so easy to agree with everyone else with. Well, based on scientific evidence. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's the real point. Uh, I, you know... As this, what I read was, again, it's not put in kind tones, shall we say. Mm -hmm. And I I think you've been talking, you've been saying some of the same things all, you know, in this conversation about, um, 
letting go of concepts and ideology that is the only thing that you've grown up with and you've learned it and how to unlearn it. So that to me is the hope and the promise. I, I think that's your, am I right about that? Yes, yes. Right. So that is uh, what we have is, uh, is the possibility of transformation. And we can't do it without being able to listen to everybody and pay, and pay real attention. That was my, ex my experience with that was with Ramdas. I don't remember if I even told you, but when I first met him, he dropped everything. He didn't know me. I was a complete stranger. I went to, knocked on the door, he opened the door and then just kind of was totally present. And what can I do for you? And you know, there was no Richard Alpert, no Ram Dass, nothing. It was, it was about me. And that gave me, you know, so much, um, I felt safe and trust and all of those kinds of things. And, and, that's, and that's what we have in my mind uh, to give to each other, really. Mm -hmm. It's just that, that kind of presence which allows us to feel safe. That would go a long way to bridging some of this divide, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, you know the the whole woke culture. What does the woke cult culture mean to you? I think, I think, real wokeness is not shoving ideology in other people's faces. Mm. I think, like I said, it's helping people understand because you can't scare people away. You know, if your whole the whole point is to bring people together with, you know, better views on everyone and kinder, more open views on everyone. You can't, you know, jump to conclusions. You can't just shove it in their face. Like, I'm telling you why this is better. Like you sort of need to be a lot more kinder about it. And while I do agree with like most of all, like pretty much all their like, thoughts and like how they their beliefs I think they're just not very good at telling other people how to believe it because it's becoming messy where people are because it, it's really just scared people away like they they hear this and they're like oh that's a lot of information that takes a while to learn and I already know this and it's safe for me because I already know it so I think people just need to be better at expressing um why they think something or why mm. they're spreading it what do you mean by how to believe it well you said you know when things are um people you i think you're saying people have difficulty really ex expressing the, the shall we say a common truth or a mm -hmm. scientific truth um is that what you mean by uh, finding a way for you know for them to to believe, yeah, is by pre presenting real uh, scientific evidence. In in the case of much of what we're talking about, yeah. I mean, not in the case of somebody who's who is using power for their own self interest. So, yeah, woke. So you were talking about wokeness. What yeah. wokeness is to you? Um. Yeah, so I, I mean, I think, in a in a real way, right? Because it's it's one of those uh, newfangled, ubiqu uh, ubiquitous, meaning uh, you know, a, a commonly used now by everyone. And now there's there's uh, you know a flashback against it because it's elite. Is that that's my understanding? Yeah, it's sort of just become a bit more sort of. I I think it's lost a bit of its meaning. Because it's become this thing for big media to follow where it's like, oh, you're a part of this. You must be like an angel, like more people are going to. So I think by that, it's sort of lost its meaning. I think it's better when it's kept to not something that needs to be like um, in big media. Well, obviously, the ideas should be represented and what they're saying should be shown in media i just think that when they try too hard to be a part of woke culture not 
um, the beliefs in it. I think right. that's where it sort of loses its meaning because then it's more like you sort of just want to be in this big popular group. You don't yeah, really care yeah, what yeah. they have to say. Yeah, right. So here, look at this. That's my mind rolling motto, one of my mottos, awoken awareness, okay? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's for those of you who weren't watching YouTube or aren't watching YouTube of this. Uh, yeah, but I, I go, it's a Buddhist concept. Mm -hmm. The awakening, the Buddha awoke from the illusion, basically, under the Bodhi tree, right? Yeah. Awareness is the, methodology by which we can transform everything you're saying is to uh to let go of much of this because even that doesn't even people who are even that's not uh, that's polarizing right there you know it's hard to not do that you know because we are so attached to our own version of reality yeah but uh yeah so it's the ability to uh, unlearn, that's what you were talking about, unlearn stuff is is the beginning of whatever has to happen for people to change and because they've been brought up in very restricted environments one way or the other. And so the idea of even thinking about awareness and what does that mean um, to me, the first thing that we're talking about, you know, and you can say, I'd love to hear what you think about it, is awareness of our self-motivation versus what potentially we could do for others. That yeah. is, is, that's the very first use of uh, what awareness can be to help change, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, like... Mm -hmm. Awareness of what you can do for others is definitely because it's sometimes not even just not doing stuff for yourself, but it's sort of like, what else can I do for others? Sort of how can I do like more, you know, because sometimes I think we're either focused on nothing or ourselves. And I think we need to sort of expand because I think it's sort of a win win if you're aware of others and helping others and doing things for others because it can, it's rewarding to mm -hmm. yourself as well. So I, I think that it's just a win-win situation and people should start taking that way instead of the easy way, which is to just do things for yourself. Mm. Yeah. It's a lot of what we do take the easy out a lot, don't we? Uh, and it's something we're used to and so on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I know one of the things that you've been doing for other people is uh, cooking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he's the cook at home. That's uh, amazing. And uh, Zoe's completely vegetarian and cooks this wonderful food. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. And you like doing it. Yeah. I just made croissants on oh. last weekend. Oh, wow. That's really great. Oh, well, thank you for being here, Zoe. I, I always appreciate hanging out with you. And uh, it's wonderful to see you because I don't get to see you that much uh, because I had COVID. <laughs> but now I'm recovered. I'm going to see you soon. And everybody out there, again, this is Mind Rolling on the Be Here Now Network. Go to BeHereNowNetwork.com. And you can catch all kinds of incredible content around consciousness that hopefully gives some idea of what we can do to close the divide. That's the th that's that's kind of our theme, Zoe, the of this uh, podcast. Close how to close the divide, huh? Yeah, uh, really good thoughts. So uh, thank you again, and we shall see you next week on Mind Growing.